It's the most wonderful time of the year. Ah, I love it. There's a chill in the air. Leaves are getting crispy and stompable, and everyone is getting in the spooky mood. It fills my heart with glee to stuff my days in October with as much horror media as my greedy little hands can get their paws on. And I usually pick out a handful of creepy indies to play through this time of the year. If you're like me and love curling up on a couch with an atmospheric spook fest, you owe yourself a playthrough of Yomawari Lost in the Dark. While this is the developer's third game in the series, Lost in the Dark stands alone with different characters in a familiar world. This is my first venture into Yomawari, and it won't be my last. To be quite honest, I'm now absolutely hooked for whatever these creators have coming next, and I can't wait to go back and dive into the first two chapters. You're playing as Yuzu, a young girl who is was mercilessly bullied and who, after one terrible day at school, awakens in a forest without much of a memory of what brought her there. From here, you meet a mysterious girl who tells you that you've been inflicted with a curse and you must break it by the morning. You push through a dark, gruesome world with some of the most fun creature designs I've seen this year to collect some of your lost objects that hold your memories. It's a tragic story that deals with heavy subjects such as suicide and abuse, and it can feel pretty oppressive at times, but there's really a nice heart to it as well. Yuzu is a beam of light in a dim world, and wanting to see the best for her means I will be coming back eventually to go for the true ending. The mysteries here feel worth unraveling. I'm honestly a little surprised this has me so enamored, because I often need something more mechanically fiddly to really sink its teeth into me. Basically, this is a top-down 2D horror adventure where you're solving simple yet engaging puzzles in the most haunted city you've probably ever set foot in. The sound design is phenomenal, from the buzz of a decrepit vending machine to the chirping of crickets. Every alley and ship cabin seems rigged against your every step, and there are a lot of jump scares. You might think you're immune to 2D spookiness, but I found myself getting a little out of my seat at times. It definitely got a couple yelps out of me. Most of the terror I felt came in the first few hours, though, each beastie giving me palpitations and making me curse at my TV screen in the dark alone. But after a little bit, you start to fall into the rhythm of their design, which allows them to set you up for some gloriously frustrating encounters and puzzles where they play off your expectations. There's some other one-off gimmicks, but your two main verbs are managing your stamina and figuring out little brain teasers as you tiptoe around with your flashlight that emits a small cone in front of you. Learning each enemy's pattern and deciphering encounters was almost always a joy. Puzzles usually aren't that difficult. I have major poop brain, but I still figured out how to get to at least an ending. Not that I wasn't left wandering at times, but usually it was my fault for not paying enough attention. And most of the time, the game tells you exactly what you need to do, to a point where I felt a little too held by the hand at times, but it never stopped being fascinating. Also, the sprint button is good to get you out of trouble, but if you want the full, creeping experience, I suggest walking a bit, because running would sometimes undermine the scares which also functions as a possible tip for those easily scared. There is some quality of life stuff I would like to see eventually. The menu tax for finding items you need gets ridiculous near the end when you have well over 100 objects. Sometimes checkpoints would go from overly generous to very stingy. Hitboxes could seem weird. And the currency used for saves was so abundant, the system felt unnecessary. But what this game mostly consists of is hiding from big scary things, awesome set pieces, and a bunch of kitties. So I think it's all pretty much a win. Even if it doesn't stay scary for the whole 15 or so hours it took to get the initial bad ending, it's consistently shocking and extremely stressful in the best ways you want from these die-to-learn type of games like Inside or Little Nightmares. It's not perfect, but it's flirting with greatness around almost every corner. This will catch you off guard, thrill you, make you laugh, and send shivers down your spine. Just trust me, wear some headphones, dim the lights, and enjoy this horrific little treat. There's a soft spot somewhere deep inside of my bones for these seemingly cute pieces of horror that know how to balance tragedy and humanity, and this one deserves the attention of any fan of the genre. So that's why I'm nominating Yomawari Lost in the Dark for a Golden Genie Lamp.